With it being the start of a new year and New Year's resolutions top of mind, I, like many others, started to think about what 2024 would have in store. Since I am very clearly a baby beginner YouTube video essayist, I have so much to learn about how to edit videos, scripting, sound. My apologies for the low quality mic. I want to know if I enjoy the process and can be consistent before I invest in a better quality one. I thought back to some of the nonfiction books I have read regarding improvements. And the one that came to mind first was Outliers, The Story of Success by Malcolm Gladwell. Outliers was published in 2008, and it is where the 10,000 hours stat was popularized. When looking at various individuals that have reached the top of their profession, such as chess grandmasters, it took about 10,000 hours of practice to reach that le level. Essentially, talent plus 10,000 hours of practice equals success. This was the point pulled most from in reporting, and is most likely the context many of you had heard about this book. But when I read it a few years ago, this little stat was one of the least interesting parts of the book. Now, this stat has been debunked a little bit. 10,000 hours is actually a bit on the high end, and quality practice and quality education seems to be more important than the quantity practice, which you can read about more below. A larger part of the book was about how part of the reason people get to become outliers was honestly sheer dumb luck. They just happen to be born at the right time to take advantage of societal and technological changes for the time, for example, Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg. But the most impactful part of the book for me was a specific example. In a photography class, half the students were graded based on quality of a photo they submitted for their final project. One half had to submit 100 photos to get a good grade, while the other could get a good grade with a single quality photo. On average, the group in the quantity half actually did better because having a photo requirement total forced students to practice more, to take more photos, allowing them to accumulate more hours of practice. The quality group spent more time contemplating the task instead of actual practicing. And since its New Year's resolutions are abound, I thought this would be a very interesting and potentially inspiring video giving people a plan to help their New Year's resolutions and showing how it really is one foot in front of the other, and eventually they'll get there. So I checked out Outliers again to review it and source it, and this example isn't there. I skimmed the entire book, I searched keywords, I scanned the book again. I could not find this example anywhere in the book. My mind is lying to me. I have a clear memory of this example. I remember taking this advice to heart. It was so nice to realize, especially as a beginner, the best way to get better was to just make the crappy thing, like this video. And then make another crappy thing, and then make another crappy thing, and eventually, whatever you're creating is going to be a little less crappy. I've told so many people this little example as encouragement and given a roadmap for improvement. So have I been lying to others? Have I been professing fake information and in my efforts to be earnest, leading them astray? Do I have a false memory? If I didn't read this in Outliers, where did this information come from? I don't think I made it up, but how can I trust my mind? Well, it turns out memories in general are not videos or photocopies of what actually happened. For those wondering, I did locate where this photography class story came from. Turns out it was in Atomic Habits by James Clear, which I had read about the same time as Outliers. And I think when recalling that info, my synapses just kind of misfired and my brain logged that as a tidbit from Outliers as opposed to Under Atomic Habits where it actually came from. You can read this tidbit about the photography class without checking out the book. The excerpt is actually on James Clare's website, which I have linked below. On a broader note, this has been such a good reminder for me about how fallible my memory actually is. In this article from Scientific American, they go in depth about a research about how accurate are memories of 9-11, and it does a great job of explaining and examining how accurate our memories actually are. And quoting directly from this article, our measure of accuracy is consistency with what people told us in the survey the week after the attack. 
From that first survey to the second survey a year later, the overall consistency of details of how they learned of 9-11 was only 63%. At the third survey, three years after the attack, consistency was only 57%. So people were only a little more than 50% right for a lot of the details. And this basically is a reminder to me that my own memory is very fallible. While my brain is not intentionally lying to me, it may still be incredibly wrong. And if somebody tells you the wrong information, it may be completely unintentional. There is a good chance, like me, that their memory is just not quite as clear as we would like it to be, and with the best of intentions and utmost honesty, have stated fiction. Which is why trust but verify is so important. Now, if you want my two cents on what book to read, for most people, Outliers isn't really a necessary read. The main takeaway for a lot of it is to become an outlier, for example, to the level of a John D. Rockefeller or Henry Ford. A lot of it really comes down to sheer dumb luck and being at the right place in history at the right time. And for a lot of us, this is not helpful if you're looking for a path to improvement on a much smaller scale. Now, if you want actionable detailed steps on how to reach your goals, I actually would highly recommend Atomic Habits. This is on everybody's best nonfiction books list for a reason. This provides very clear-cut steps on how to get better today and how to set up your own systems for success. It doesn't say anything about willpower, and it's perfect for the average person just wanting to get better. Whether it's work, hobby, or education, most of us can pull something useful from Atomic Habits. So check it out from your local library. If you would like smaller bite-sized bits of this information, a lot of it is also directly on James Clear's website, so you can look at that and it's linked below. In addition to Atomic Habits, but if you want improvement in a more visual format, I also had to mention this TED Talk by Josh Kaufman about the first 20 hours of learning being the most bang for your buck. I've linked it in the description below and it is about 20 minutes and is a wonderful introduction on why if you want to start learning something, the best way to do it is really just by starting. So thank you guys so much for watching my little thoughts. If you feel like sticking around, please consider subscribing and I'd love to hear your thoughts and tips on resources for improvement and your own 2024 goals so we can all cheer each other on.